known as the Learning in Future Education, or LIFE project, a team of researchers led by Professor Dr. Anne Bamford have undertaken a detailed investigation on the impact of 3D on pupils' learning. The research project involved over 700 students, 47 teachers and 15 schools across France, Germany, Italy, the Netherlands, Turkey, the UK and Sweden. The goal of the LIFE project was to determine the most effective types of 3D experience and to measure their value and impact on pupils' learning and achievement. We pre-tested the children and then we post-tested them. And I think a significant thing was is that children in the usual classes, so in the 2D classes, around about 50% of the children are actually not learning anything. So actually their post-test results were less than their pre-test results or the same. So you've had six to eight weeks of learning without any changes in the children's learning. If we compare that with the 3D classes, the 3D classes we saw on average an 86% of children had improved over that time. So they had a better score in the post-test. What was then interesting is when we looked at the children who had improved both in the 2D class and in the 3D class, we found that the children in the 3D class, the rate of improvement was double the rate of improvement for the 2D children. So putting that simply, not only had the 3D children improved significantly more in terms of their test scores, but the rate of improvement was also better, which I think is really interesting. If you then put that together with the findings around whether they retained the information, because what we did was we, we looked at them four weeks later, whether they actually were remembering the work that they had. What we saw there was not only did once again the 3D children remember more, but the quality of what they remembered was different. They were able to remember more detail and particularly more detail about the function of the body parts. The other thing we did in terms of the research was we also looked at children's behaviour and their communication during the lesson. Before the 3D started, on average, only about 50% of the children were actually paying attention. So only about 50% of children were watching the teacher or listening or on task, and the other 50% basically are not paying any attention. When the 3D comes on, you see a sudden spike, a sudden increase in the amount of attention that the children give to their learning. So they become very focused. And at that point, about 94% of children were paying attention. So it's quite a big difference in attention levels. But what was then interesting is after, say, five or ten minutes of the 3D, when they took the glasses off, that attention not only continued to increase, but actually increased even more. So it went up to 96% after they actually took the glasses off. So the effect of the 3D not only helped them when the glasses were on, but actually helped them as it continued on afterwards. Also we track conversations that the children had, their questions and communication, because I was worried whether the 3D glasses would actually stop them talking to each other. And what you see once again is that the rate of pupil questions related to the topic increased substantially after the 3D. So children asked more questions and joined in more conversations than they had before. And from a, from a sort of anecdotal way, many of the teachers said there were children who asked questions who've never before asked questions in school. Now I just want to finish on a quick story which is from a French classroom. Well, a very good French teacher was, was our pilot teacher and he did a lesson where he literally had everything. He had worksheets, he, had a, it's, he began the lesson with a film of a guy having a cardiac arrest and the children had to theorise you know, why he was lying on the ground and what was happening and so on. And then he brought out real sheep's hearts for the children to cut up, right? And so suddenly this French classroom was full of all these sheep's hearts and you know, the children are, you know, reluctantly sort of dissecting and all the rest of it. And at the end of the lesson, I was interviewing the pupils, and I said to them, well, you actually had three lots of 3D in your classroom because you had the virtual 3D, you had a plastic torso model, which was 3D, and you also had the real heart, which was 3D. I said, which one did you prefer? And I thought they would all prefer the real heart. And they said, 100% of them said, we preferred the virtual 3D because it's more real.